Inside the David Braley Athletic Recreation Center on your Saturday afternoon as the Mohawk Mountaineers, well, they're squaring off against St. Clair College on Saturday afternoon. OCAA women's basketball action here at the D-Bark. One team in the thick of the playoff race and well, the other team, they're, they're starting to find their stride. Kevin Duffy and his squad, a struggling year, an un-Mohawk year to say the least, but Saturday afternoon, should prove to be a little different. Coming into today's contest, well, the Mountaineers, they sit at four and 11 on the year, and well, the St. Clair, they sit at eight and seven. Greg Campbell alongside Steve Baxter. And Steve, I mean, I was talking to Kevin Duffy before this game, it's their fourth game. They're gonna have a four game stretch over the course of seven days. That's gotta be tough if you're an athlete. That's, yeah, I mean, they're somehow still gonna have to get some rest within those three days. But four, day, four games in seven days is it's gonna be tough. And it's something Kevin Duffy talked to me about saying that he's gonna have a word with the OCAA about that. And he said it's one of those things, you know, it's not fair for the student athletes in particular, but we're gonna have action on the court and we're gonna have tip off underway here at the D-Bar. Mountaineers win the tip. They're set up moving right to left on your Saturday afternoon. Mountaineers early on trying to find it inside the paint. They do, shot gets blocked and altered on the play and good stop by St. Clair right off the bat. St. Clair brings it across, moving left to right. Logan Kusuru. Kusuru is gonna draw the foul. She's gonna head to the line for two and already you see the mentality, they're going straight to the lane. Yeah, and that was just a nice drive. They're being aggressive right away, trying to get points on the board right away. And St. Clair is putting up 73 points a game and they're going right at the basket right away. So it's not surprising that they're putting up that many points a game. So first shot is made, second up, and that is good as well. So the stars for St. Clair, that would be Kirsten Tompkins, Anna Uccellini, Logan Kusaru, as well as Jana Kusaru and Nor Bazi. And well for the Mountaineers, it's Sam Pokernick leading the way, along with Hannah Zinkwich, Beth Minnelli, Haley Davis, and Didi Otong rounding out the starting five for Kevin Duffy and his squad. So Otong's gonna set up on the opposite side of the scorer's table. She to find the far right wing. It's going to be kicked back out to Pokernik. Pokernik, match up with Ulichny or no Tong. Back into the middle. Pokernik's got two on the shot clock. Hoist a prayer right into the hands of Otong and can't convert. So a missed opportunity by the Mountaineers, and St. Clair comes back the other way. And high off glass again, right inside the paint, St. Clair goes, and they're rewarded. And they, another strong drive again. Like I was just saying, they're looking to drive to the lane really early. Already have a foul call and a nice layup from the baseline from St. Clair. Minnelli's got on the left wing. Oh, no. Tong straight away three. That is going to find the hands of Sam Pockernick. It's going to be kicked out to Davis. Davis Zinkwich, my apologies, swings it. Pockernick again, deep three. And two consecutive air balls and an empty possession for Kevin Duffy and his squad. Were those the best takes they could have had there? Uh, I mean, they could have definitely had had better shots. Um, St. Clair is playing very good defense in the last two possessions in a row. Mohawk has been down to the very last second to get a shot off. And so we already have a timeout on the floor right now early on in this contest. The officials for this game, Stacy Newbigging, Broom Pelagi, and Clifton Grant are the officials taking you through Saturday afternoon OCA women's basketball action. As we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, well, St. Clair, they sit eight and seven on the year. That's good for a tie for fifth along with Niagara. And for the Mountaineers, they're four and 11, but we began to see a lot of strides by this team offensively and defensively. Yes. Mohawk Mountaineers just averaging 53 points a game. They are going to definitely have to step up their defense coming out of this timeout. Pokernick, one of the big reasons why, averaging 19 points per game, shooting 41% from the field, 79% from the charity stripe. And oh yeah, by the way, she almost averages five rebounds a game as well. Back to the action on the court. St. Clair trying to go inside. Pokernick diving to the floor gets her hands on it. And Kevin Duffy talked about before the game, they're having to be hustle energy plays from both sides. 
spe specifically his team, and you're seeing that early on. Yes. So St. Clair is going to get the ball in, and we've got it's going to be a push off offensively on St. Clair. So Jana Kusaru gets called with the push off, and you can't extend the elbow, right? No, <laughs> you can definitely not extend the elbow. Steve Baxter, Greg Campbell, bringing you through OCA Women's Basketball action here on M-Link Sports and Entertainment on your Saturday afternoon. Pokernik, a third three, and she finally gets it. And immediately, Andy Kiss comes over to the scores table and calls timeout, and he is irate. You can see him on the floor. He's talking about stopping Sam Pokernik before the game, and well, Sam Pokernik has found her stroke. And even though it's a one possession game, you can already see early on, it's only four to three, but Andy Kiss is already concerned about how many open looks Sam Pokernik has got to this point. Well, she's airballed those first two threes. One of them was a really good look, but she's a shooter. She's not gonna be scared to try to get her shot. Even after two air balls, you're gonna, and we just saw it. She just drained her third three. And just like you said, they're gonna try to keep an eye on Pokernik and a three right away from her is not what they want. And talking to Kevin Duffy before the game, some of the keys to this game, he said, offensively, well, simply, it came down to a lot of simple matters. Don't turn the ball over. Defensively close out with more of a pace. Execute their offense with pace, which is something we see. Some yep. offenses are very, very quick, and some, you know, more stagnant, and they're slow to set things up. But not slow to set up this 1-2-2 two, two full court press are the Mountaineers. We'll see whether St. Clair can break it. They do beautifully. Coast to coast, high off glass, and converting on the play, Logan Kusaru, and that's how you beat a full court. Oh, press. and she has all the points right now for St. Clair. The Mountaineers now a little frustrated on the other end. Now Pokernik ends up with it three on two, kicks it to the corner. Zinkwich, too strong. Otong almost had it off the hands of a Mountaineer last. So St. Clair gets the basket in transition on the full court press break, and then they come up with a turnover. I don't know, in my opinion, I don't even know if that went off Mohawk Mountaineers on that play, but then again, that's why I'm not a referee. Tompkins got across the pond, ends up in the head of Lichny. Ball moved around, turnover, Mountaineers have it. Zinkwich trying to find someone and just no Mountaineer came to her help right away. A tie up and it's gonna favor St. Clair. Yeah, and you know what? That was a good decision because you don't want to make any crazy passes and get a turnover. You might as well just go for the jump ball and let them set up a play and try to get a basket instead of an easy drive. Now Jenna Kusaru leads the team, averaging 20 points per game, shoots 69% from the charity stripe, 34% from the field. And then Anna Lulichny, she averages 16 points a game. So St. Clair has four starters averaging double figures. And there is another easy convert on the inside, this time Jana Kutsuru, who we just mentioned. Mountaineers are gonna break the press. Pokernik too strong for Otong, who almost goes into the stands there. And St. Clair's press works on that one. You're seeing Andy Kiss his sixth year at the helm for St. Clair, and so far frustrating a young Mountaineer squad. You can see how strong that the St. Clair's head coach is, and his intensity definitely, you can see it transfer into his team. And back to back baskets made by Jana Kusaru. Nothing but net on that one, and the lead is up to seven. 10 3, three minutes gone here in the first quarter at the D Bark, and one! So they're going to continue the motion, and an and one secured on the play by Hannah Zinkwich. She'll head to the line for one, and that is a strong take, Mr. Baxter. Yes, it is. Very strong take, indeed. So Hannah Zinkwich will head to the line to try and get the old-fashioned three-point play. She does. Well, she's already at her season average, only averaging 3.1 points per game. She's 17% from the field. Doesn't matter there, though, as the Mountaineers are clawing back into the St. Clair lead. Mohawk continuing with the press. So far, though, this press hasn't worked. What will St. Clair do on this possession? Zinklich tried to force a hand off the hand of Pokernik. St. Clair's going to get underneath the net with seven on the shot clock. And we have a substitution being made. So substitution coming in for the Mountaineers. Alex Parente is in. Davis is out, as is Otong. Two on the shot clock, they're gonna try to force it into the lane. They're gonna call it 
off St. Clair last. Mohawk finally gets a good defensive stand. Yes, they do. And let's see if they can get some momentum going here. They well, have had some pretty decent looks. Let's see if they can capitalize on this possession right here. Well, first is breaking the full court press, almost converting off the foot of a St. Clair player. So good idea, they move the ball fast and that's something what you want to do to bre break a full court press. And that was a nice look. That bounce pass almost went through. That would have been an amazing pass. Driving baseline, Parente up and in. So the lead back down to two and Mohawk on a 5-0 run of their own. Oh, And they almost get the press to work on that one. And again, too strong, Jenna Kusaru. I feel like we're going to be calling her name all afternoon, <laughs> yes, partner. Yes, we are. And a turnover by the Mountaineers, but not St. Clair catches footing. the ball out of bounds. So it will be Mountaineers basketball. So you literally need no idea where she was when she got that ball. Choke it up, boy. Janice got sight of Referees having a discussion. Don't know for sure about what yet. So they're switching the shot clock, it looks like. So to the mount 22 seconds. So the Mountaineers had full possession at one point. So they say you literally never secured full possession, hence the two seconds off the shot clock. Right into the hands of the official was that pass, and well, Cliff Granton is going to hand it off to St. Clair after the turnover by the Mountaineers. So this full court press giving fits to Kevin Duffy and his squad yeah. early on. Yes. Four minutes in, four point lead. And what a defensive play by Mohawk. Pockernick coast to coast. She's gonna draw the foul. Sam Pockernick's gonna head to the line. Very strong take by Pockernick. And that's something you don't want if you're Andy Kiss is to get Sam Pockernick going. And that was one of the key players that the, that he wanted to stop. And he's she's drained a three and now going to the line for two shots. Has the potential to have five quick points. Pockernick almost shooting 80% from the line. Makes the first. Nothing but net on that one. And that's just a shooter's touch right there. <laughs> Sporting that right knee brace as she has all year though. Both are good, so the lead is trimmed once again. Substitution coming for the Mountaineers. Davis in, Zinkwich out. Still going with this full court press here. Both sides do not seem to be relenting on it at any point. So St. Clair's gonna try and move the ball underneath the basket. Ball swung around the perimeter. Dribble handoff to the left side, going straight away right now is Norbazi. Turnover, Pockernick's got it. One and on Pockernick's one the other way. gonna have to take it alone. And she a converts. What a strong take by Pockernick. You can tell she is slowly getting into her groove. And the Mountaineers right back in the thick of this contest. We're nodded at 12. Bozzi looking for a teammate. She finds Ulichny. Anna Ulichny, deep three. Again. Good luck, good the lead right back to St. Clair. Oh. After the Mountaineers tied it. Turnover. High off class converting is Bozzi. That's a five point swing. That is a five point swing. That was just a careless turnover by Mohawk. Kevin Duffy and his squad had to figure out this full court press. Parente being badgered in the corner. Send it on the baseline. Minimally, and pass intended for the corner. Hits off Jamie Chauvin. Mohawk Mountaineers basketball on the baseline. Mountaineers trailing by five. Five minutes gone in this contest. You're watching OCA women's basketball action here on your Saturday afternoon on Emily Sports and Entertainment. Pockernick with the cut back door again. Pockernick with the layup. It's the Sam Pockernick show, something we've seen <laughs> a number of times this you year. You know here what? It's not surprising. Left wing three thought about to be deferred. It's going to be kicked around. Straight away shot. Too strong. Securing her own rebound. Ulichny. Bazi. Right wing deep two, they're going to call it. So Norbazi getting in on the action as well. And she's fronting that full court press and creates the turnover. Ulichny, bounce pass, ball swung around, Bazi gets it, and tic-tac-toe, well you see that's three in a row for St. Clair. The lead again, back up to seven. Minnelli, looking for Parente. Almost pass. another turnover there, and they are gonna call it Mohawk Mountaineers basketball. 
So the Mountaineers catch a break. Substitutions coming. 21 to 14 for St. Clair against Mohawk in this game currently. St. Clair came into this contest eight and seven on the year. The Mountaineers four and 11. And they're gonna get eight seconds shock, full court violation. So weren't aware on the inbound there. No, weren't paying, weren't paying attention to the shot clock. That's something fundamental that you know Kevin Duffy's not gonna be happy about at no. any single point. Kusuru, bounce pass to the right wing for Ulichny. Get it over to Bazi. Back to Ulichny. And this is very good ball movement by St. Clair. Keeping Mohawk on their toes. Last second shot by St. Clair. Can't quite get that three to go. St. Clair though, another possession. Left wing shot in and out of the toilet bowl by Tompkins. Parente's guy almost traveled on the play into the hands of <laughs> So Parente. Looking baseline. St. Clair running a zone play, it looks like here. Looks like they're playing like a matchup zone. Tried to go between the legs of the play of Kusuru on the play. It's going to be, again, another turnover for the Mountaineers. So Mohawk struggling to find their footing here consistently in this game. They trail by seven with 3.05 left in the first. And you know the head coach of Mohawk is definitely going to be talking about the careless turnovers come the break time, and just how to secure the ball, just make smart plays. Deep left wing three, that is too strong. Otong ends up with it, gets doubled right away. Didi Otong's gonna bring it across court. Nope, just gonna hand it off to Sam Pokernik. So Pokernik dictating traffic, looking for that wing pass right now. She's gonna get the screen from Chapinier that set it soft. A push on the play. It's gonna be get called on Ahmed, so Kulud Ahmed, the five foot four guard of Windsor, Ontario, in her second year gets called on the foul. Pokernik's gonna have it with the shot clock at 14 on the inbound. Left wing to Parente. Try to dump it inside, ball tipped around, Pokernik has it. Forces her way into the lane, stripped by Bazi. Looking for the pass into the corner. Tipped by St. Clair, St. Clair basketball, bringing it up the court. St. Clair going the other way. Ball swung around the world. Left wing pocket deep two and made. Again, excellent ball movement by St. Clair. They've been doing that since the very beginning of the game. And it seems like Mohawk just, just can't handle the intensity of St. Clair's offense right now. Zinkwich has got it right near the straightaway. Over to Parente on the right wing. Otan. Right towards the cameraman. And an empty possession for the Mountaineers once again. So checking into the game, Kirsten Zelina, the 5'10 guard out Wilkesport, Ontario in her second year. Bazi. Deep jumper, shot missed. Ball fumbled around, it looks like off the hands of Otong. Ah, well, I'm wrong on that one, and that is why, partner, <laughs> I am behind the booth. I thought personally that went <laughs> off Didi Otong last, but all for naught. Mountaineers, largest deficit of the game at nine. Sinkwich on the right wing. Trying to find Otong. I think Andy Kiss had a good say on that one. Looked like it was a double dribble. But Mountaineers are not getting it. Tabazi kicks it to the left wing. Gets Zinkwich moving, going to lane. Ball fumbled around into the hands of, let's see who ends up with it, Sam Pocketing. Chapinier skips it to Parente. Three on three the other way. Alex Parente almost again, a double dribble and an art turnover by the Mountaineers. Tompkins has it. And St. Clair still playing amazing defense. And no defense at the end there. Unaware are the Mountaineers in transition. And well, an and one opportunity coming up for Zulinu. Kirsten Zulinu, again, the 5'10 guard out of Wilkesport, Ontario. So she'll head to the line for one due to the sleepy nature of the Mountaineers defense. And they are going to make a full lineup change. St. Clair at the line for two shots. 
St. Clair shooting 65% from the free throw line this year. Can't get that one to go, so Mountaineers bring the ball up, swing the ball around. Tries to drive in. It will be Mohawk basketball at the baseline. Let's see if they can get a nice basket out of this line play being run. So facing their largest deficit at this point, 11 points, Kevin Duffy and his squad. Wow. And a, ra that. <laughs> a rainbow three-point shot. Nothing but net on that one. They call it a deep two. Chelsea Borg, the 5'10 guard out of Hamilton, first year of eligibility. So it looks like one te each team will get one possession to finish this first quarter. Too strong on the play. 20 seconds left. Mountaineers try to claw their way back into this deficit. Minnelli's got it. It's going to skip it across the pond to Kalura. Left wing three, too strong. bossy has got it. Last possession should Seven go to St. Clair. Seven seconds. St. Clair's got it. What are they going to do? Left wing three, Ulichny is going to be missed. And that is going to be the end of 10 minutes. The first quarter is done here at the d -Bark, and The Mountaineers trail by nine. So the Mohawk Mountaineers, 4-11 coming into this game. Well, not doing themselves any favors here early on, Steve Baxter, as they trail by nine after 10 minutes of play. Yeah, they like I keep on saying, Mohawk is just going to have to intensify their defense. And just careless turnovers when St. Clair is uh, full court pressing. And the thing is, what we're seeing early on is that the Mountaineers, I mean, frankly, They've just, they've had spurts where they've come back into this game, but at no single point have they been able to stay within striking distance of St. Clair to this point. And let's see if that can change here in the second quarter. And the Mountaineers, defensively, we're seeing early on giving up too many open jumpers from St. Clair at this point. You lick me. And yeah, you're seeing Lou Lichney early on going at it in the paint, as is Kusaru that's had a couple open jumpers on the evening so far. And well, again, after 10 minutes of play, they trail by nine here early on. What do you like offensively and defensively from Mohawk so far? Well, you know what? The the shots that Mohawk is getting, they are some pretty decent looks. Even their drives are very smart, not just driving into a crowd of three people. Um, they just have to be able to capitalize and hit their shots. Defensively, they, they are doing okay. They need to do a little bit better about uh, switching maybe on defense. And it seems like they're having trouble for some reason guarding the corner. Uh, St. Clair is getting a lot of really open looks from three in the corner. So Logan Kusaru has six points off two of three shooting, as does there's three players right now with six for St. Clair. As is Jana Kusaru and Nord Bozzi all have six apiece. And while Sam Pokernik leads the way, having nine of the 16 points for the Mountaineers. Now, if you shot 50% in a, a quarter partner, you'd say your team is doing pretty well. <laughs> but the Mountaineers still trail by nine. And why is that? Well, the visitors are shooting 65% oh, on the field. Oh, my goodness. Well, so we'll see what adjustments have been made during that mini break between the quarters. Steve Baxter, Greg Campbell bringing you through Saturday afternoon OCA women's basketball action here on M-Link Sports and Entertainment. The Mountaineers trying to find win number five on the season. And St. Clair eight and seven on the year, tied for fifth. They're looking to climb their way into the playoff picture. They're right in the thick of things. Back in the court, shot clock. Three and seconds. Out. And they're gonna get bailed out by a foul, so Didi Otong driving on the right side, a foul on North Bozzi, and that's a break if you're the Mountaineers. Yes, it is. Mountaineers running another line play. Let's see if they can capitalize on this one. Good defense by St. Clair. Nowhere to go for Otong. Just has to force it in. A jump ball. The possession arrow is going to favor St. Clair. So good defense right there. Not allowing anything and not being fooled by any of the motion off that set play. Right. Substitution now being made by Mohawk College. Kalura back in, Pokernik in, Otong is out. 
Ball's going to be set up on the left wing straight away. Does St. Clair have it? Bossy swings it around. Ball's and let's see here if they adjusted themselves on defense. Bossy. For the very beginning of that possession, they were playing very good defense. And if you're going to – if St. Clair is going to be taking shots, the ones that you want them to take are outside shots because they are harder to win. Well, transition is the name of the game. Andy nice, Kiss nice. told me before the game and kissing it off the glass on that play is Logan Kusaru. So again, EGC transition points and another turnover by the Mountaineers. They are just having trouble with this St. Clair pre full court press. St. Clair passing the ball in. Kusaru at the top. St. Clair with that ball movement, excellent ball movement. Open three. So that is going to be too strong. Bozzi ends up with it. And again, second chance opportunities for St. Clair nipping the Mountaineers in the back heel right now. And it just, Mohawk Mountaineers just need to do a little bit of a better job boxing out. There's been too many offensive rebounds for St. Clair so far in this basketball game. And they're pushing the pace right now, going coast to coast with the left hand. Too strong is Kusaru. Pokernik, two on one with Minnelli the other way. She's going to call her own number, defers as she gets it. A nice little runner there by Pokernik. Faked the pass, but said, nope, I'm going to take this one. And she's lucky because she picked up her dribble at the end there, but she does get the basket. So Kusaru has that on the left wing, gets minimally moving. Jumps it into the inside, is too strong. Beth Minnelli stretches it across the pond to Zinkwich. Almost gets a strip there, but keeps control. They're going to pull it back out and set a play up. Kalura supporting that right knee brace. Looking for Pokernik. Not looking to be threatening. Deep, deep three off the front. Pokernik with the offensive rebound, puts it up, can't quite hit that layup. Bosnia's going to have it moving the other way. Mountaineers down by 11, tied for the largest lead of the game for St. Clair. Again, securing the own rebound and forcing it up was missing was Kalursa. And a in and out three again. So. Inside positioning, and they're going to call an offensive foul this time on the rebounding opportunity by Kusaru. So you're seeing, even if they're getting the foul call, it seems like St. Clair just has their way in the paint on those second chance opportunities. Yeah, like I was just saying, their Mohawk basketball team is giving up too many offensive rebounds. And also, like I just said, they just need to do a little bit of a better job boxing out. Pokernik's got it. Can Kevin Duffy and his squad make a mini run here? in the mid stages of the second quarter. That won't help matters. Three on two, they go the other way. Pass Boss. was a little bit long, but it is saved. Ball is moved around, shot is up, a little too strong, and the Mountaineers catch a break. Pokernik, they go one on four the other way, she's a slow down. Smartly brings it back out. So dump it in, Chapinier to the wing, Parente. Looking for Kalura. Who ends up with it. So he gets screened from Chapigny. Again, not a strong screen set by Emily Chapigny at any point, but Beth Minnelli with the left wing three. Very nice shot there by Mohawk. Now, this is when they definitely need to capitalize on defense. They're only down by eight, 29 to 21 for St. Clair. Little momentum as you hear the defense chance pick up for the Mountaineers ladies squad right now. Prente. A little bumping action. She's going to get called on the foul. And Kusaru will head to the line. And like you said before, Greg, we're going to be calling Kusaru's name a lot this game. Well, between Jana and Logan Kusaru, I'm assuming they're sisters at this point by the last names. Jana averages 20 points per game. And while Logan, not too shabby herself, averages 10 points per game, shoots 40% from the field, including 74% from the charity stripe and averages six rebounds a game as well. And we're seeing the rebounding total. I mean, for the Mountaineers, it's been a struggle here early on. Very, very solid stats there. Kusaru drains the first one, nothing but net. So only a one rebound differential in the box score after the first quarter, but it doesn't seem that way with the second chance opportunities. So the lead extended for St. Clair. Press is broken by the Mountaineers. Mountaineers Parente's running a play. Got it. 
So we'll move it over to Minnelli. Looking for Pokonik back door, doesn't get it. Parente gets her defender moving into the lane. Off the right hand, off glass, in and out. Pokonik. Pokonik. Second chance. But and she can't get that one to go. That was a really strong effort by Pokernick. She just had an offensive rebound over three other girls. Can't say Claire go the other way. Nope. No look pass intended on the play from Kusaru to her sister and Logan. Very nice defensive sequence there from Mohawk. So a 2-2, two -two, one full court press. Ends up with a turnover and a basket once again, Jana Kusaru. Kevin Duffy and his squad have not made the adjustments to this full court press. That doesn't help. And one. What a steal there by St. Clair. And their full court press is just dominating right now. Jana Kusaru, four straight points off two consecutive turnovers by Kevin Duffy and his squad. Cue a slate, almost a whole bench emptied by Kevin Duffy in this situation, see if the lineup change can help create a break from the stagnation in this full court press. St. Clair at the line for two. There is five minutes and 24 seconds left in the second quarter. So she gets the old fashioned three point play and a timeout on the floor. So the Mountaineers facing their largest deficit in this game, trailing by 14 points, 36 by 15, 36 to 21, they trail St. Clair right now. And partner, I think it simply just comes down to they do not have an answer to this full court press right now. No, definitely not. And it's, I feel like since they've had, they haven't been doing well with it up until this point. And I think it's just getting into their heads right now. The inbounder is just, sees, sees the open man and St. Clair just closes out on them very, very quickly, and it's just predictable passes. So the Mountaineers are looking to break their two-game losing streak, their last game while they lost against Fanshawe College. Up in Fanshawe, 92 to 44. A bit of a beatdown to say the least for Kevin Duffy and his squad, but they are among the top teams in the country. And while St. Clair comes into this game on a one game win streak, courtesy of a win at U of T Mississauga, in which they won by coincidentally the exact same score, 92 to 44. <laughs> Both teams coming back out now out of the timeout. So the Mountaineers having played this past Thursday, well, they're back in action here this Saturday afternoon on Emling Sports and Entertainment as another turnover. Then they play again on Tuesday and then on Friday, all here at the Debark. But again, a four game span over seven days. And this is not helping matters as the lead, the largest of the game at 17 with five minutes left in the first half. They do break the full court press this time though, and Zinkwich with the pocket right corner too. And what a three. That was a much needed basket by Mohawk after three turnovers in a row, costing them six points. The bleeding has been continuing in the earlier stages here on your Saturday afternoon. And the defense collapses and the beneficiary and the long two is made on the play by Jamie Chauvin. So open opportunities and turnovers forced by St. Clair at this point, and hence why they have a 17-point lead. Tong, you can see she's struggling with that left hand when forced with pressure. To Zinkwich, Andreas, try to cross it over back to Zinkwich. And St. Clair is just switching on every single screen that's being set, and I think that is bothering Mohawk a little bit because they can't get the open man. So a shot clock violation they're going to call. There is say that St. Clair never had full possession at any single point. It was at two when they had the turnover there. Kevin Duffy arguing that they did have the ball. So the officials right now, Clifton Grant, Stacy Newbing are going to discuss things. And Clifton Grant's going to say, nope, it's going to be St. Clair's possession. So the Mountaineers are going to switch to this 2-3 high zone looking to find an answer defensively for that of St. Clair. St. Clair with that ball movement. And moving it beautifully, and Kusaru left wing three, too strong. High point in the rebound was an opportunity for St. Clair. Goes off them last, and the Mountaineers will have possession. 
three minutes and 53 seconds left in this second quarter. If it's a 17-point game, 40 to 23, if you're going to want to get something going, it's going to be right now. We'll see what Calera does on this possession. Hand off to Otar. No hot potato. No one being assertive in the lane right now. Calera's going to get bumped on the play. She's going to get bailed out by the foul by Kaylee Chauvin, the 5'10 forward. Uh, Ruthven, Ontario, in her first year of eligibility. Partner, where is Ruthven? <laughs> you know what? I am going to be totally honest. I don't think I've ever heard of that. We're going to find <laughs> that out when we get the opportunity. <laughs> and, ooh, hitting the ground strong on that play and heading to the line, Haley Davis. So a tough fadeaway jumper. But she will head to the line, and I mean, when you're a team that's not seeing the ball go through the basket normally, well, the best opportunities, I think, are at the charity stripe. Time stops, and you have a free opportunity. Yeah, not only at the charity stripe, just very close buckets in between, like, the 10-foot range and closer. I think that's the shots that they're, they need to try to get right now. now Haley Davis since returning from an injury has started in five of the six games she's played in this year, only averaging 2.5 points per game. Second free throw made. Just Mohawk going back to that 2-3 zone. We'll see what they do with it here. And you can see how high pressing it is. They want to force it into the lane. They got to be careful of those backdoor cuts though right now. Ball moved around brilliantly by St. Clair. And a left wing three. And well, what do you know it? Once again, Jana Kusaru with the open shot. And she is just on fire this game. Again, another left wing open three opportunity. And the thing is, St. Clair is making them count at this point. And Kevin Duffy and his squad, no answers. Chauvin's going to get called on the foul. And because of the ticky-tacky nature, unfortunately, the bonus situation rears its ugly head here for St. Clair. So this is the only kind of minor blimp they've had here in the first half is they've been very aggressive defensively. But with three minutes left here in the first half, well, anytime the Mountaineers get fouled from this point forward, they're heading straight to the line. Yes, and that's, I mean, being the Mountaineers right now, that's what you want. And because they're in bonus, I, you would think you should see them driving to the lane for the next few possessions in this last three minutes of the quarter. So Beth Manley tries to get in going for the Mountaineers. They trail by 17. With three minutes left here in the first half at the D-bar. Kusaru. Into the paint, back up to Kusaru. Now where are the defense for the Mountaineers? Too strong, Zinkwich is gonna end up with it. Pocknick, will she call her own number? Slows it down, back to Zinkwich. Zinkwich into lane, off the right hand, off glass, too strong. So St. Clair continues to push the bleeding here at the D-bar. Kusaru, to left wing. And something, Tompkins' ball moves around back to Tompkins. Ball deflected by Kalura. Kusaru's got it, three on the shot clock. Pull up, jumper. Too strong again, second chance opportunity. Offensive rebound by St. Clair. And this is something that I was just talking about on the break. The look Mohawk Mountaineers just need to capitalize on boxing out. And look at the ball movement by St. Clair. Kirsten Tompkins is gonna head to the line, the five foot five guard out of Sarnia, Ontario in her first year. Again, they're moving that ball so quickly against the zone that Kevin Duffy and his team, well, they can't set their feet defensively at any point, and they're getting confused, quite frankly, in their assignments. And it's, yeah, it just seems like Mohawk doesn't have any answer for it. And because it's been like that for majority of the game, you do not see them going away from their offensive scheme. Tompkins will head to the line. Fifth in the team in scoring, starting 12 to 14 games she's played this year. Averaging 9.4 points per game, shoots 67% from the line. Also a 34% shooter from the field. So Minnelli, we're under two minutes here in the first half at the D-Bar. OCA Women's Basketball Action here on your Saturday afternoon. Steve Baxter, Greg Campbell bringing you through that here on Emling Sports and Entertainment. Walker Nick with the deep three. Can't quite get that one to go. It's going to be off the hand of St. Clair last. The Mountaineers will get another opportunity. It's going to be on the side out here, so we'll see if they draw it up any differently. 
right near that baseline. An awkward area, to say the least, for an inbound play. Parente's got it on the right wing. Across the pond to Pokernik. Tip off the hands of, they're going to say, Pokernik last. I'm not sure if Tompkins got her hand on the ball Pumpkin. at any point. And she is kind of waving her hand right there. I think the ball might have jammed her finger a little bit on that one. We'll see how she is. Not good are the Mountaineers at this point. 17-point lead, the largest of the game for St. Clair. Minnelli high points the rebound. Sinkwich. Gonna call her own number. Bullies her way into the paint too strong. Can't quite get that left-handed layup to go. So St. Clair now coming down with the basketball. Tompkins. Outlet to Lichney. Back to Tompkins. To the left wing for Mara. Cross the pong. Ball moved around. Look at this tic-tac-toe. This ball movement. And an open shot, and again, the ball movement comes up and scoring on the play is Tompkins. My apologies, Anna Lulichny. And not only is their ball movement very good right now, they're hitting all of their open shots. St. Clair all over the Mountaineers here on your Saturday afternoon. Chapigny, not looking to do anything with it, but hand it off to Parente. Skipped it across the court, over the hand of Pokernik. Again, Pokernick's not a six foot five tight end on that one, so <laughs> a little difficult to come up with. And you can see the body language. Sam Pokernick very frustrated right now. You can see it in her eyes, in her arms, and the Mountaineers just trying to find some sort of momentum at any point here in the late stages of the first half. Off the right foot, right hand, and a strong take made by Ahmed. Mountaineers will have the last possession. 10 seconds left in this half. Down by 22 points. Four seconds. Pokernik, what's she gonna do? Calls her own number, she's gonna draw the foul. She'll head to the line with 1.3 left in the first half. And if she can hit both of these, she can make it a 20 point game. It is 48 to 26 for St. Clair with 1.3 seconds left in this half. So Sam Pokernik averaging 11 points Per game more than her this team's next lean scorer in Beth Minnelli, who averages 8.1 per game. Pokernik makes the first, averages 19 a game, shoots 79% from the stripe. Barring a full court pass and shot, <laughs> I would say they're just gonna inbound the ball here. Are we gonna see some magic now from St. Clair? I will put my bank account on not. Nope. And they're just gonna play it. Just play it smart and let the, uh, let the second quarter run out. So at the end of 20 here at the d -Bark, well, the Mountaineers have some adjustments to make, to say the least. They trail by 20, 48 to 28, the visitors lead after 20 minutes of action here at the d -Bark. The Mohawk Mountaineers, I mean, they came into this contest 4-11, and 11, Steve and St. Clair 8-7, and seven, and in the thick of things in the playoff, and they're right in the thick of things in the playoff race right now, and they're asserting their will here early on. Yes, I mean, they are just having their way with the Mountaineers right now. Everything seems to be working. Like I keep saying, the ball movement is very good. They're capitalizing on all of their open shots, and Mohawk just doesn't have an answer for it. And leading the way, one of those players, Kirsten Tompkins, she averages 9.4 points per game. And I mean, the 5'5 five five guard out of Sarnio, she's done a good job, but it's also been the show of Janet Kusaru and her sister, Logan Kusaru, to say the least. And yes, between the two of them, averaging 15 points a game. And since they're sisters, they've grown up together, so that chemistry between the two of them will be there. Yeah, and Sam Pokernick is trying to do what she can for the Mountaineers at this point. We'll see what adjustments are gonna be made for Kevin Duffy and his squad heading into the break. So after 20 minutes of action here at the D-Bark, well, it's St. Clair that has the lead. For Steve Baxter and myself, Greg Campbell, we'll be back with second half action. Here at the D-Bark, will Kevin Duffy and his squad make the halftime adjustments <laughs> needed? We'll find out. We are back inside the D-Bark looking at action around the OCA right now while George Brown, St. Lawrence going at it right now. George Brown leads 80 to 63. Tipping off at 4 p.m. Centennial and Algonquin get it going. U of T, Mississauga, 
who actually lost to the same St. Clair College team, 92 to 44, the other day, are playing Sheridan right now. They're almost through three quarters, 44 to 24, the score of that one. And at 6 p.m., Humber and the Sioux go at it. Back here at the D-Bark, well, it was a struggle of a first half, to say the least, for the Mountaineers as they trail by 20. 48 to 28, second half basketball action coming up here on M Link Sports and Entertainment. Steve Baxter alongside myself, Greg Campbell, bringing you through OCA women's basketball action here on your Saturday afternoon. And we'll see what adjustments Kevin Duffy and his squad have made coming out of the break. Minnelli gets the dribble handoff, tried to find Parente, and again, another miscue right off the start of the third quarter. And that is definitely not what Mohawk wants to see. That's not what the head coach wants to see, especially after all the turnovers in the first half. Speaking of turnovers, well, the Saints had 15 points off the turnovers of the Mountaineers, while the Mountaineers had just nine points off turnovers. Fazi, one of the main scores here in the first half at the debark, ball is going to be swung around. Bozzi screaming, calling for it. It's going to be off a mound near last, off Beth Minnelli, and they'll have the ball with five on the shot clock. So we'll get into some of the halftime stats when we get an opportunity. bozzi has got it. In and out of the toilet bowl again, second chance opportunity. The storylines continuing here in the early stages of the third quarter. And that's two offensive rebounds right in a row for St. Clair. Good box out on the play. Parente ends up with it. Two on two with Pokernick the other way. Fumbles the ball. Pokernick gets it. Drives right. baseline. He's going to find Parente. Too strong into the hands of... It's going to be a foul. Haley Davis will head to the line. So again, not very fluid in their offensive transition on that one. They could have had two potentially. They do head to the line. But you don't like how sloppy it's coming out right now. No. Like, I mean, like I keep on saying, just too many turnovers in the first half, and it just car carries on right away in the second half. That is not what they not what they want to see at all. It's a Kusaru show here at the D-Bark right now. Jana is 6 of 12 from the field, including 5 of 7 from within the arc. 14 points, 5 rebounds. And Sister Logan, well, she's got 10 points herself. She's 3 of 4 from the field. Mohawk and has cannot hit that second free throw. So St. Clair coming down with the basketball. And what a steal by Mohawk coming down with the fast break. Pokernick's got it to Zinkwich, to Parente. They call for that high screen from Davis. Off the zone screen. Davis doesn't seem to do anything once she set the screen though, but does end up with the ball. Looks for Pokernick back door, finds her too strong. And that was a really nice backdoor pass. Pokernick is upset with herself on that one. Kusuru skipped it over to her teammate. It was Tompkins. Bozzi fighting for it on the floor right now. Who's got it? It's going to be a jump ball. It's going to favor the Saints. So we saw that a lot in the first half. A lot of open opportunities for Nor Bozzi, who is kind of the third person forgotten in the scoring mix, but she's been lethal when she's been open. Yes, she has. And she's the third, what did you say, the third top scorer of the team? From, based on my stats, yes, she is the team's third leaning scorer to this point. But from what we've seen so far, it seems like she's closer to the number one spot. She is capitalizing on everything that she's been doing as St. Clair drills another three-point shot. And a Lulichny, the Tecostomy, Ontario native with a pocket right three and a lead again big right now for the Saints. We're playing, we could say, ungodly here. <laughs> through about 22 minutes of action at the D-Bar. Minnelli, too strong. Rebound, Kusaru. Chana looking up court. No look to Bossy. pass corner. Nice little touch pass, and again, a deep two. This time, Logan with the basket. And it looks like they are just having fun out there, smiling. Right now, it looks like the Saints are playing chess, while the Mountaineers are playing checkers. <laughs> Kevin Duffy and his squad got to find an answer. They got to find a way back into this game. These backdoor cuts aren't doing it offensively at Three this Three seconds point. on the shot clock. Pokernick. She gets the tough one to go. Nice left-handed layup there. Not how you draw it up if you're Kevin Duffy, but hey, sometimes you got to get baskets like that if you want to get back into a game. Bozzi, cross court. Tompkins, bounce pass inside to Jana. 
Kuz oh my goodness. Beautiful reverse layup on the play by Kusaru. I feel like the Mohawk defense could have put a little bit more pressure on that layup there. They just kind of let her go. It was a very nice layup, but I feel like they could have capitalized more on that defense. Pokernik to send it to the wing. On the left side of the mountain here, Parente, deep three, whoa! Ox Parente with the deep three draws the oohs and ahs from the crowd. Yes, she does. St. Clair. 22 point lead for the Saints. We're coming off a win on Thursday versus U of T Mississauga. And St. Clair again with that ball movement. Just amazing ball movement. Norbazi with the left wing three. So a pair of substitutions coming up for Andy Kiss and his squad. Parente on the right wing matched up with Baze. To Davis. And off to Minnelli. Minnelli being forced way beyond the three point arc. Six on the shot clock. Sinkwich trying to find something. So it had to be forced to take it. It's going to be in the hands of Parker. Nick at prayer off the sideboard. Gets the shot off defense. in time, but just can't hit the rim on that one. So St. Clair will have the ball out of bounds. And good, strong defense by the Saints. Substitution being made now. St. Clair with the basketball bringing it up from their end. Five minutes and 50 seconds left in this third quarter, 19 on the shot clock. And let's see if St. Clair can keep up this ball movement. The Saints, around the world they go. Nice little fake on the play, right wing three, got it! And again, St. Clair capitalizing on their offense. What a three. It Anna, is now 61 to 33 for St. Clair. Anna Lulichny with the great fake out on the play. No Mountaineer defender near her. And well, she makes it rain. And Yena has got it on the other side. St. Clair, fast breaking. Can't quite get the layup to go. Mohawk with the rebound, trying to make a fast break of their own. Minnelli is going to pull up. Zinkwich, deep two, way too strong, into the hands of Tompkins. Tompkins, Tompkins has it. Oh, she's gonna get, the ball's gonna be tipped around, into the hands, left wing three, right Another near the side. Another three by St. Clair. Ulichny again with the deep three, back-to-back -back threes for Anna Ulichny, and the lead, the largest in the game, 31 for the Saints. Minnelli, right wing. She responds to deep right wing three. Mohawk has started this second half off very well. They just need to get some stops on the defensive end. Their offense looks good, but their defense is still a little bit shaky. Literally got it over to Chauvin. Chauvin looking for something. Mid-range jump shot put up, can't hit that one. Mohawk bringing the ball up. Zinkwich has it, Mountaineers moving left to right. Coming off a loss Thursday. Got four games over the next seven days do Kevin Duffy and his squad have. Foul Good. being called there on St. Clair. We have a Mountaineer going to the free throw line. So Kalira will head to the line for the two free throws. So the leading scores at the break while well, coming into the third quarter was a 50 to 28 lead for St. Clair College. The Saints and well, it was Jenna Kusaru that led the way with 14 points, five rebounds. Her sister in Logan had 10, and then it was Sam Pockernick doing the brunt to the scoring on the other end. 13 points off four of 11 shooting from the field. Minnelli drives baseline. She's going to get the foul called, so this time the baseline drive does work out for the Mount Mountaineers, and Beth Minnelli will head back to the line. Being aggressive, <clears throat> like I said, being aggressive coming right out of the half. They just need to get some stops on the defensive end. And not only that, just stop allowing so many offensive rebounds. Beth Manley, the team's lead scorer, averaging 8.1 points per game, shoots 73% from the charity stripe. Also averages 7.8 rebounds a game as well. Goes one and two on that trip. Too strong on the play for the Saints. So a rare turnover by St. Clair, and Mountaineers will end up with it. Three minutes and 50 seconds left in this third quarter. The score is 64 to 37 for St. Clair. Otong's got on the left wing. Hand off to Parente. 
Find Minnelli. Gets Bozzi moving. Pull up jumper. Contested. Too strong. Bozzi secures the rebound. Nor Bozzi pushing the pace. Nice little cross court pass. Bozzi ends up with it again. Around the world we go. Pocket left corner. Three. And well, what do you know? Same result this time. Chauvin with the long two, they're going to call it. it they are just hitting all their long jump shots, and even if that wasn't a three. It seems like they are shooting a ridiculous percentage for three. Yulichny and one. Anya Yulichny sizes up Alex Parente, goes, creates the contact, and will head to the line for one, a strong take for the save. That was a very, very nice finish on that take. So Anna Yulichny. A strong, strong third quarter here. Had eight points coming into the second half. Two of three from the field, including three of four from the charity stripe. The team's second lead scorer, averaging 16 points per game. Shoots 75% from the charity stripe. Averages almost five rebounds a game and nearly three steals a game. Partner, looking at the stats, the Saints have almost three players in their lineup averaging three steals a game or more. That's insane. And you can totally see that throughout this entire game. Every time St. Clair has been full court pressing Mohawk, they have been getting the steals, getting the stops, and again, just capitalizing on every single mistake that Mohawk has been making. Freckleton's gonna check into the game for the first time, the five foot five guard out of Windsor, Ontario in her second year of eligibility. Andy Kiss and his squad, well, they're sitting pretty here on your Saturday afternoon on Emily Sports and Entertainment. Steve Baxter, Greg Hamill bringing you through OCA Women's Basketball action here at the d -Bark. A timeout on the floor called by Kevin Duffy. And quite frankly, partner, we thought we might see a different result here in the third quarter in terms of the turnaround of the play, but the storyline has been the exact same since the moment of the tip-off up until this timeout for St. Clair. Yeah, and you know what? They they have stepped up a little bit on defense for the most part, but it seems like right near the end of their St. Clair's possession, they just don't shift over to that very last person that seems to be standing in the corner, and St. Clair's just been capitalizing on it. They've been playing nice defense up until the very last second. The Saints have four players coming into this game averaging double figures including both Kusarus as well as Bazi and Ulichny. And those four players we just mentioned, well, I mean, they're, they're just putting in the work here on your Saturday. <laughs> Very entertaining to watch here. And the thing is, you're seeing how snappy their passes are too. No one's softing these passes at any single point. These things are coming out like fastballs every single time they're passing the ball around. And that's setting off the defenders of the Mountaineers because they're on their toes the entire time. Because at this point, they're having to move consistently and they have no idea where to position themselves. So, three minutes, just under three left here in the third. 32-point lead for the Saints. Freckerton came up with the rebound there. Pokernick with the steal, and they missed shot. Can't quite get that layup to go. Bozzi the other way. Four on four, she's gotta have her head up. Game double, no matter, finds her teammate and finding the basket is Zelina. Kirsten Zelina, the five foot 10 guard out Wilkesport, Ontario with the basket. Mohawk. Will the Saints find 100 points in this game is a question we might have answered in the next 12 minutes or so. Five on the shot clock, Otong, right? into a waning Zelina. So they're actually gonna call Marissa Mara on the grab, the five foot five guard out of Sarnia in her second year. And again, we saw this in the first quarter, or it was the second quarter, my apologies. Again, just very aggressive defense, this time a little later, but the bonus comes up again for the Mountaineers. Right, and the St. Clair's defense, again, just at the end of that possession, they've been playing very good defense and making Mohawk not be able to shoot until like the last three seconds of the shot clock, making Mohawk put up kind of ridiculous shots that they don't want to be shooting. Well, they'll take the free throw shooting, and D.O. Tong only shoots 54% from the line, and well, you saw it in that trip there as they win that mini battle there, and they're winning the game big right now. And I think that was a little ticky-tack foul on Mohawk. Chapigny is going to get called for that. That's her second of the contest. 
St. Clair has the ball on the baseline. So they're going to find Bozzi on the right wing. Three. And that is in and out again, though. A offensive rebound by Annie Kiss's squad. This time on the left wing, and that gets to, into the net. Jamie Chauvin. The second chance points that St. Clair is getting in this game is just it's outstanding. It's, it's insane, the second chance points. Parente, match up with Franklinton. Going to try and get inside position, too strong. Otan trying to find the rebound. Freckleton ends up with it. Bazi. Matched up with Didi Otong. Gets her moving. Pocket left, corner, three. Too short. Bazi saves it. It's going to be off the hands of Pokernik. Nope, they're going to call it off Bazi. So Bazi caught that out of bounds before reestablishing her feet, and it's Mountaineer's possession. 74 to 37 for St. Clair. We Doubling have, up the Mountaineers right now yes, to this point. Yes, I, I, I mean, I don't want to say this game is over, but they, they're going to definitely want to make it respectable. Let's see what Kevin Duffy and his squad have drawn up for the last 11 minutes or so of this contest. Too strong by Pocknick. It's going to be a hustle play by Otong, but off her hands last. Now, let's see if... Mohawk can step up their defensive pressure in these last 55 seconds of the third quarter. Mohawk contentious in kind of a soft 1 2 2 full court press. Bozzi's going to find Freckleton, touch little pass inside, but a block by Emily Chapinier. A what? rare defensive block. Pokernick the other way. And two far ahead of her. So they do something great defensively, Steve, and then they just come up empty on the offensive end. Just, just. The pass was just a little bit too long. The right idea, exactly what they wanted to do, just a little bit lighter on the pass. St. Clair. So it's going to be off Zinkwich last. So Frank Freckleton will have it. So get into Bossy. Bossy's going to, nope, there's not a screen set. She's going to kick it back out to Zelina. Freckleton, left hand, hand off to deep three that shot is missed by bossy and a second chance and again the saints heading back to the line kirsten zelina in on that one she'll head back to the line the wilkesport ontario native <laughs> 18 seconds left st Clair at the line for two and hits front rim on that one can't get it to go so zelina started 12 of the 15 games she's played in this year. Only average just 1.7 points per game. Makes good on that one, though. So, consumed by the score differential, it wouldn't be a bad idea for Mohawk to go quickly in this possession. Kalura trying to find Pokernik back door, doesn't work. Chapinier trying to create separation underneath, ends up in the hands of Zinkwich. Pocknick into the lane between four Saints and gets it to go. Nice layup there by Pocknick. Very soft touch off the backboard. Beautiful. Sam Pocknick splits four Saint defenders, kisses it off the glass. The bank is open on your Saturday <laughs> afternoon, and she'll head to the line for one. But we'll get a quick inbound after the free throw here. And she hits it. And again, they just let the .8 seconds run out at the end of the third. We're we are looking at 75 to 40 for St. Clair. We're through three here at the D mark, a 35 point lead for the Saints. And well, Andy Kiss and his squad, they have just been firing all afternoon. And partner, you look up at the scoreboard there with some of our replays. I mean, it's those open wing threes or pocket threes, those are the best shots you can take statistically from an offensive standpoint and well they're just killing them from that range and I think I mentioned that before the half they're getting very good ball movement and always finding the open man in the corner and not only that St. Clair is able to capitalize on those corner shots they have the Mountaineers defenders on their heels at this point and for Kevin Duffy and his squad well I think it's about winning this quarter at this point and working on the little things moving forward. I mean, some of the keys he talked to me before the game, he said, don't turn over the ball. 
Uh, I wouldn't say they've done a good job of that at that point. Close out defensively? Yeah, I wouldn't say they've done too good a job of that either. To play with energy, make more energy plays, we have seen that for the most part. I mean, they are hustling, but the one key thing he was talking to me about is that in their last matchup, he was talking about the concept of thinking versus athleticism. And he was saying the more his players overthought things, well, they can't react naturally and athletically to their sets because guess what? They're trying to think about where they have to go at this point. Right. And I think we're seeing a lot of this in the same contest right now is that simply the Mountaineers are just trying to think of where they have to position themselves. And by the time they're thinking about it, well, the ball's already in the net because the Saints, all five players in the court have already touched it. Right. And just like you said, just overthinking. Every time a Mountaineer seems to get trapped somewhere on the court, they have just been seeming to panic and throw the ball away, thinking that a man is open and just careless passes. Anna Ulichny had eight points coming into the second half. Well, she's the game's lead score now. Well, tied second technically behind Sam Pokernik, who's got 18 at this point, 33% from the field, six of 18 to be exact. Ulichny, 17 points. Kusaru's got 12, and Anna, as does Jana, has got 16. Bazzi's got 11, and Jamie Chauvin's got 7. So a lot of scoring going on for Andy Kiss and his squad. And the rebounding difference, it's not as big as you think. It's only 33 to 24, but it's off those opportunities they've been actually able to convert, I'd say, like 75% of the time. Oh, at the very least. Every time they've gotten an offensive board, they've been able to capitalize. Miscommunication on the play right there between Tompkins and Kusaru. And a rare turnover by St. Clair on that play. Something we haven't seen a lot of this afternoon. So the Mountaineers, see if they can win the quarter at least here. They'll be back on, on action here at the Debark on Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. And of course you can watch that on M League Sports and Entertainment. Deep right wing three made by Kalura. Steve Baxter, Greg Campbell bring you through OCA Women's Basketball action here on your Saturday afternoon. Ball moving again. They move this so crispy left to right. And a little too strong off the one footed floater on the play by Kusaru. Kalura's got it the other way. Defers to Pokernik. Pokernik drawing out her defender and Ulichny. They oh. turn over right into hands of Usuru. Off glass, and what do you know it? Another basket off the turnover. Kusuru makes it again. And like you were saying before, St. Clair has been making passes that have just been zip passes right to their teammate very quickly, but Mohawk's passes have just been a little bit soft and easy to steal. Not really putting any zip on it at all. Tompkins is going to be inbounding, probably going to get it over to Ulichny. Team's lean score through three with 17. Pokernik on the other side with 18. 34 point lead for the Saints here at the D bar. Looking to keep that ball on the right wing. Do the Saints do? Too strong. Kalura with it. Looks like she poked the eye at Tompkins on that one. She's slow to get up, moving back the other way. Kalura, right wing three. That's in and out of the toilet bowl. Davis with the hustle, but just out of the outstretched arms of her. St. So Clair. Bring the ball up. It is 77 to 43 for St. Clair with just under eight minutes left in this last quarter. Chauvin sets the screen for Topkins. Too strong on that one. Flying around are the Saints. Davis hits the floor. The Puts her end body up. on the line. Minnelly zip over to Zinkwish and didn't have awareness where her feet were on the line. Gets the pass and is stepping out of bounds. That's not what you want, partner. No, that is not what you want. And it seems like this type of stuff has just been happening all game. It just hasn't been Mohawk Mountaineers game today. Emily Andreas checks back into the game. See what the Saints have drawn up here. Ulichny pull up. She's going to kick it to the pocket right corner. And that is going to be in and out. So a rare miss by the Saints on an op open opportunity by Zelina. But again, got an open look from the corner. It just, Mohawk has not been able to play defense on that corner, it seems. 
Pokernik is going to be content to bring it all the way back out. And take a screen. Minnelli's got it. Four on the shot clock. And partner... That, that, that possession sums up this game so far. Yeah. It's just, just no one's willing to be aggressive at any point early on. They're deferring to set their offense way high out instead of penetrating the defense. And it creates hard and awkward opportunities when you have to drive it from outside the three-point line with, like, three on the shot clock. Right. Andres Steel. is going to end up with it. Pocketing, right wing. Was looking at that cross-court pass, just decided not to. Good decision by Bachner. Dictating the offense. Andreas ends up with it. D3-0. Oh. And drills that one. Surprise three-point by Emily Andreas. Only averages 1.8 points per game. Shoots 50% from beyond the arc. She's going to get called for a foul on the floor, too. St. Clair basketball. Wouldn't be your first take, I would say, in your offensive set, but it worked. <laughs> Kusaru. Kicks it. Again, left wing corner, shot missed. Right. Pushing around, a right second chance. Again. Another opportunity, third time's the charm. Jenna Kusaru. And again, a wide open corner three, which is what I have been saying. And offensive rebounds by St. Clair. Mohawk has not been able to box their their uh, their assignment out. Just an ill-advised shot on that one by Emily Andres. She looked up at the scoreboard after that one, realizing there's probably not the right take. So Bazi is going to check back in. Yulichny out. St. Clair basketball bringing the ball out and. You Nice little cross over there by Bozzi. Freckleton into the lane off the right hand. Too strong, secured by Davis. Davis trying to find an outlet, finds Pokernik. Pokernik. Take a screen from Davis. Content to sit right by that free throw line. Minnelli. So they find her teammate. Into the hands of Andreas. Off the handoff from Borg. One on the shot clock. Oh, they're going to get bailed out. <laughs> Nor Bozzi is beside herself with a foul there. Does she have a case? She she cannot believe it. I mean, you know what? That, that could have went either way. There was contact, but I don't think anyone would have been upset with a no call there either. So Haley Davis will head to the line, averaging 2.5 points per game. Five minutes, 35 seconds left in this game. It is 79 to 47 for St. Clair. It's pouring that white headband. The thing is, that is a three-point free throw opportunity. So a rare miscue by the Saints. Third free throw and hits front rim. Can't get that one to go. St. Clair with the rebound and now seeing what they can do on offense. Saints have it on the right wing. And be moved across, back to the center lane. bozzi has got it straight away. The pull up right off the left side. Shot miss, rebound Borg. Outlet Minnelli. Minnelli's gonna side step a Saints. She's gonna go with the right hand, a little too strong. Tried securing her own rebound. They foul on the floor by Zelina. And is this? so they're gonna get they're gonna say before the shot it seems like on the floor so Mountaineers will have it underneath the basket it's 14 on the shot clock and let's see if they can get a nice shot out of this line offense whenever they've run this play it seems like they haven't really gotten an open per oh and as I say that Kalora gets an open look fakes it. Takes it in for the nice layup on the baseline. They say fake it till you make it. <laughs> <laughs> Worked on that one. <laughs> Commentator's curse. Or, as I should say, blessing in that case. Uh, on the other end, spoke a little too soon. Norbazi will head back to the line for two. Just asserting her will into the paint on that one. The team's third lean score, averaging 10 points a game. And swishes the first shot. 
Shoots 78% from the charity stripe, 40% from the field. Also averages 4.3 rebounds a game, 2.6 steals, and one and a half steals and a game. And I like those stats. Bozzi, it seems like she just does everything on the court. One of those, like, Draymond Green type of players that just does everything you need. I, I have no words to describe that offensive set as the Saints end up with it. She is a three-point, she's 50% from the three-point arc, Emily Andreas, but I would not say that is her strong suit to say the least, especially at these stages of the game. Freckles is gonna go off the glass, up over the backboard to the other side. A substitution coming for Andy Kiss and his squad. Claude Ahmed's gonna check back into the game, the five foot five, four guard out of Windsor, Ontario in their second year. Kalura. Mohawk bringing the ball up. Minnelli or Andreas. Almost out of bounds was Zinkwich on the play. Had to find someone now. She picked up her dribble. Kalura, left wing three. That's too strong. And a rebound by the Saints into the hands of who did you know, but it's Nor Bossi. Bossi dictating the offense. Crosses over right to left. Pocket left corner ends up in the hands of a Saint. Breckleton streaks under the lane, doesn't get it. Bozzi's got it. seven on the shot clock, calling for a screen, does she get it? Doesn't use the screen, mid-range jump shot and makes that shot. What a shot by Bozzi, she is just playing phenomenal this game. Nor Bozzi with the pull-up jumper there, fake the crossover, deferred the screen and makes it work. Sinkwich, he's gotta be careful for a carry there. Killer. The ball tipped. Calera's got it now. Look how far she is beyond the three-point arc. Trying to find something. Four on the shot clock. Zinkwich drives baseline up and in. And very nice drive there. Being aware of the shot clock with the pump fake gets the defender to bite and very nice layup on the baseline. Freckleton on the other end. Can she respond a little too strong? Calera's content to let that run out of bounds and a substitution coming with 3.07 left. Tompkins is going to check in. Bazi is out. Chapinier in. Otong in. Borg out. Andreas out. As is Zinkwich. And checking in for the first time is Ruth Kanyangu, the 5 7 Hamilton guard of Asayam Te. And we have 83 to 52 for St. Clair with three minutes and four seconds left in this belt ball game. Otong's got it. Tipped. By Freckleton, Montaniers will end up with Kalura. Tompkins watching her. Otong gets it off the inbound. Set up on the right wing. St. Clair with this amazing defense that they've been playing all game. And I think I was saying this before. It seems like majority of the possessions that Mohawk have had have been going down to the very last three seconds of the shot clock. And they'll have four to inbound it here off the tip pass intended on the inside. So Tong's going to inbound. They'll find Chapinier off the shoulder into the hands of a Saint. St. Clair retains possession of the ball before the shot clock runs out, so they will not be inbounding it. So, collapsing defense again by the Mountaineers. Wide open jumper, and that is nothing but net by Chauvin. 85-52, St. Clair. Andreas. To Kalura, off that left hand. She's going to get fouled late on the follow through, so Kalura will head back to the line. So a foul on the play by the Saints. Calero will head back to the line. And a substitution by St. Clair. Amund's gonna check out. Referees are having a discussion. I'm trying to find who the foul is on. It was on Marissa Mara. Five foot five guard out of Sarnia, Ontario in her second year of eligibility. Kalura, first of two shots, and can't quite get that one to go. Just hits the right rim. Let's see if she can go for her second one right here. 33 point lead. Can't get that one to go. But you know what? Kalura goes down and gets her own offensive rebound. Otong has it. 
So drive into lane. Off the right hand and a nice strong take by Didi Otong. That was a very nice take by Otong. Otong going to match up defensively now against Tompkins. Being shifted to that left hand. Just content to move the ball around are the Saints. Tompkins, that shot was altered by Emily Andreas. Freckleton ends up with it though. Seven on the shot clock. Right wing three. Too strong. And another offensive rebound by St. Clair. The Saints have it in the paint. It's going to be a three second lane violation off Mara, who caught that ball in the paint, got double, didn't know where to go, and a turnover. Just started panicking down there. So the Mountaineers down 13 1 with 140 left in this contest. Make sure you don't go anywhere, though. More action here on M-Link Sports and Entertainment. Steve Baxter and myself, Greg Campbell, will be bringing you through the men's action at the Debark, which is slated to tip off at 6 p.m. Otan, short on that one. St. Clair gets the rebound, trying to fast break, passes it to the corner. So the Saints trying to find something on their end. Almost through the hands of Freckleton. Ends up on the right wing, shot missed, rebound secured by Minnelli. Chapinier to Minnelli. That's Minnelli, has it. So pull a defender out. Calera's got it. Under a minute left here at the D bar. Andreas on the right wing. To swing it to Otong. Six on the shot clock. Otong, what's she going to do with it? Because a girl with the right hand adjustment, shot missed, Freckleton rebound. Otong with a foul. And that will put this game to and rest. And again, when they put up that shot, there was two seconds left on that shot clock. I mean, on their offense, they've been sc passing, screening away. But you know what? They haven't really been mixing it up too much. St. Clair's just been able to switch on every single screen and basically do what they want on defense. Tompkins dice a crossover. Ball ends up in the pocket left corner. Chauvin drives baseline to get the foul called against Emily Chapinier. Shot clock will be reset to 14. Foul on the ground. St. Clair will be passing it in on the baseline. Freckleton to inbound that ball. And they do get it in. Long, long two put up. An and one. Freckleton with the and one. She'll head to the line for one more. And the hustle plays continuing for Andy Kissing's squad, and they're up 33 in this game. And she is just all smiles after hitting that shot. She is just having fun out there. Freckleton will head to the line for one. Gets the old fashioned three point play. 28 seconds left in this ball game. Mountaineers probably have last. Offensive possession. Otong. So we kick it back out. Kalura left wing, three. Good. Deep three made on the left wing, and there's a silver lining to this contest right at the end. Kalura with the deep three. It's 31 point lead. They're going to dribble this out. And the Saints. Playing godly here at the D Bark in the first of two <laughs> matchups as they take the first contest 88 to 70, 57. And with the win, well, they improve to 9 and 7 on the year, breaking a tie theoretically at the moment with Niagara College in the standings. They alone right now sit fifth in the OCA West Division. And just start to finish, partner, I mean, they were just simply overmatching for the Mountaineers. Yeah, uh, I mean, ever since the beginning of the game, the first two minutes of the game, two to three minutes from the Mohawk Mountaineers, they were doing what they wanted to, getting stops, and they actually had a lead there. But after the first two to three minutes of the game, just everything was just out of sync, just allowing too many offensive rebounds, and it just didn't work out. Well. Now for the ladies, they are back in action on Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. right here at the d Bark and Albi against U of T Mississauga. But it's the Saints that put on a show here in the first game of a doubleheader. Whether it was Ulichny, whether it was both Kusarus, whether it was Bozzi, I mean, it was scoring by committee. We see why this team is so strong and well for Kevin Duffy and his squad. 
they'll have to adjust. For Steve Baxter and myself, Greg Campbell will be back the second half or second game of a doubleheader between the Saints and the Mountaineers here on M-Link Sports and Entertainment. <laughs>